Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tilmer here on this Tuesday. Let's talk some mountain weather and two key items on the board here today. We've got that area of low pressure spinning in California, delivering that heavy snow to the high Sierra. And that snow level is really going to be dropping to lower elevations over the next 12, 24 hours. And then you've got all this remnant tropical moisture from what was Raymond. So two items there creating weather uh, across the west. Zooming into uh, central California, boy, you can really see the spin around this area of low pressure, dragging all of that uh, precipitation. Look at that high Sierra snowfall right there in blue. So all that moisture is getting banked up against that uh, west side of the Sierra, and lifting it up, creating and enhancing that precipitation across uh, California. Let me take you into Colorado. Boy, we have had a uh, incredible three days with big time precip down here over the southwest mountains of Colorado, Wolf Creek, Pagosa, um, seeing over five inches of rainfall. This was a very high rain snow line because the storm bumped into a warm atmosphere and so most of this was rain unless you were above 12, 13,000 feet. And here comes the next storm. So this creates a second surge in a lot of the river flows. We had flooding around Pagosa. This will create a second surge. But the snow levels with this today are going to run about 12,000 feet, uh, generally for, that, uh, for most of the mountains in Colorado. Um, so here are my bullet points. Here's what I'm seeing. So we've got the low plus the remnant moisture from Raymond. Um, and that's going to run today, tomorrow, probably into the 16th as everything has yet to move through the inner mountain. That's why it's going to take a couple more days. And then there's another storm system, so a total of two, 10, 19, 20, and 21. That one looks to be just a notch colder for many areas, so that's going to bring that rain snow line down to a lot of the valley floors. Um, and I'll show you what I'm expecting with that coming up, but there are the key dates to watch for uh, best odds of snow in Colorado, Utah, Wyoming, Montana, and also interior BC. So again, kind of two different uh, storm systems there um, in this cycle. Let me show you the, the water vapor satellite imagery this morning. So remember on this, we're looking at moisture in the atmosphere. The oranges, the reds, the black colors, that's really dry air. The action is in these white areas and these blue areas. And boy, that definitely corresponds to there's our storm system. And notice with this flow, um, that moisture from Raymond is right there in the white, and then it's backed up immediately by quite a bit of dry air. So that's an interesting flow pattern. So we're kind of pushing um, all that moisture through and then there's dry air coming in behind it. So that's your water vapor and you can definitely see the key features right there. Um, let me take you to uh, the forecast radar here. So we'll start this up at uh, lunchtime today there on the clock. Um, right there, Tuesday, October 14th. So there's our area of low pressure. And again, just a little bit of moisture here from uh, Raymond. But again, the movement with this storm system will take it in to the inner mountain west and to the north. So that has yet to happen. That's why it's going to take a couple of days. Watch it. Here we go. Dinner time today. There are the early morning hours on Wednesday. Look at all that precip. Let me back it up. Look at all the precip here hitting the Wasatch at that point. And again, all of this is going to be rolling up. Uh, to the north. All right, here we are. That's uh, lunchtime on Wednesday. Look at the, the precip over the Tetons, uh, the wind rivers moving into Montana. All right, so that is dinner time on Wednesday. Now, at this point, our area of low pressure is probably somewhere in here. It's dragging up a little bit of moisture through parts of Colorado on the southern end of this. Um, and then into the early morning hours on Thursday, um, here we are at lunchtime, and look at the uh, the precip wrapping around. So the area of low pressure is probably in here. All of this precip is wrapping around the back side. So we're still seeing a pretty good wrap around there through parts of the Tetons. What else do we got here? So there's the dinner hour on Thursday. Um, and yeah, just basically the, the very leftover components uh, of that low. And ultimately, it is moving away at that point. Uh, let's look at the middle of the atmosphere. Um, so this is the uh, the forecast for today. You're looking at either areas of higher or lower the normal pressures for this time of the year. There's our deep area of low pressure. And again, that track will take it up into that area of the northern Rockies over the next couple of days. In fact, 
Here's that forecast for Friday. At this point, I mean, you've got a big dip here in, across the west with lower than normal pressures, an impressive low right there off the east coast as well. Um, and it, this is all precipitation with that area of low pressure. One last forecast, and this is on Monday. So this would be the second storm system that comes in behind our current one. And look at this one. This one definitely has um, lower than normal pressures and you're looking at colder air if this verifies and that will probably bring the rain snow line down again to much lower elevations across the west. Um, in fact, when you look at the 10-day snow forecast here, or five-day snow forecast on this um, across the west, you are definitely seeing, I mean, look at this snowfall. That's because, and this accounts for the current storm and probably the next one as well, so the colder air will increase the chances of snow down to much lower elevations, and this is the snow that's happening today across a lot of the, uh, the Sierra. Uh, here's your snow in Colorado. We'll zoom in on that. And some pretty hefty snow up here with an extended area of precipitation coming in the forecast for a lot of BC. Um, so let's do a little bit of a zoom here. Let's do California because this is happening today. And again, that rain snow line is going to come all the way down to 6,500 feet. And you've got a big swath there of six plus inches. So the Southern Sierra likely going to see a foot, maybe even two feet of accumulation in those bright pinks. A little bit less up here near Lake Tahoe. That's probably six to 12 inches over the, the very highest terrain in that area. But great to see that moisture um, there. In fact, look at the, the plume. Um, let me take you up to Jackson, Wyoming. This is impressive, right? So you've got snow coming in a couple of different waves. This ensemble generates a foot or more of snow in Jackson, not up at the ski area, but down in Jackson um, all the way through the end of October. So this takes you out through the end of October. Impressive. Impressive. Again, a couple of storm systems coming. Um, even in Denver, this is Denver, Colorado, 5280. Look what this forecast ensemble does. It gives us a chance of snow. Uh, about an inch, maybe two inches, as we get past October 21st and 22nd, 23rd. That's probably the best chance at this point as that storm system brings in that colder air and pushes the rain snow line down to much lower elevation. So we've got some colder air coming in. It's kind of like right on time. Typically in the Denver area, the Front Range, once we kind of get close to that that Halloween time frame, we typically see a much stronger cold front move in, and that appears to be what's happening here. Um, let me take you into this uh, snow forecast. Graphically, you can see how this plays out. So you've got Wyoming, big snow through the Wind Rivers, the Tetons looking at over six inches. Anywhere you see this pink is over six inches. Uh, up here, southwest Montana, parts of Idaho. Um, now in Utah, not quite as much snow as we were talking about yesterday, but still looking at up to six inches across the Wasatch, up to six inches over the high Uintas. I will zoom into Colorado here and show you what uh, I'm seeing. So rain snow line typically here with this the storm we're seeing over the next couple of days at about 12,000, but definitely over six inches for the San Juans, uh, about a six inch pocket up there close to the West Elks, less as you go north of I-70. Now here's the caveat. Once we bring in that colder storm system around 21, 22, 23, we could be looking at more snow than what's shown here. In fact, like I showed you, some of that snow may go all the way down to the, the valley floor across uh, the Denver metro area. So stay tuned for more on that. But guys, that's going to do it for this uh, mountain weather update here on the 14th of October. Appreciate you tuning in here and uh, take care.